Hi everybody and welcome back. In this very short video, well, I don't know how long it's going to be exactly, um, I'm going to talk about some cutting tips for guys. Now, I mean, if you're a lady watching this, this can also apply for you as well. But as a guy, you know, I'm doing a fitness model competition in, you know, six days from now. And so I figured this is the best time to talk about, you know, some of the strategies that I use and I suggest, um, you know, when I get lean. Now, these are everything that I've used. Either I've used them in this current round of stripping away my fat and getting nice and lean, or I've used them in the past. And so I'm a real practitioner when it comes, I'm not just someone who's gone online and read an article and looked at 15 tips and then just regurgitating shit. So this is stuff that actually works for me. It may not work for you, but it works for me. And so I'm gonna start with the first tip. By the way, I wanna say it's the 27th of February, 2017. I just had to throw that in there. So the first tip is meal planning. Now I know people watching this roll their eyes and go, oh, the meal planning, you're kidding me. Like, oh, uh, like do I have to plan what I eat? Okay, here's the truth, real quick. If you wanna lose fat and maintain muscle and build a great body, you don't have to meal plan. You can still get results without the meal plan. I know tons of people that have done it. However, if you're a newbie and you're just starting out, and you want to have some certainty that you'll get a certain result with your physique, like you want to have some certainty that you're going to lose fat, write a meal plan. And look, you know what? I've been doing this for years and I still just wait right there. Don't go anywhere. Even though I've been doing this for years, I still have meal plan after meal plan after mid training plan, meal plan, I don't know what that is, supplement plan. You know, I still use them, so I'm not here preaching to you that you should do that. Do it, and you'll get results. You will get, it's tedious at first, I know it is really hard, it's tedious. You've never done it before, and I have videos on how to do it, and courses on how to do it, but you know, if you have a meal plan, that's catered to your specific goal, and for most people watching this is to lose fat, then I can absolutely assure you, if you, you know, construct a meal plan, you will get results. If you don't have a meal plan, there's no guarantee. No guarantee. So I'll, I can go on and on about that. I'll go on to the second tip. Fasted cardio. Now, fasted cardio is fantastic. Now, what that means is, you know, you, you're doing cardio on an empty stomach. You know, technically that's not what it really means, but you know you, you can still have an empty stomach, but your insulin levels can be a little bit elevated, so therefore it's not technically fasted. But in all intents and purposes, first thing, wake up in the morning and you go to the gym and train, or you do go for a walk. That's considered fasted, you know, in very general terms. And so that fasted cardio, as opposed to having a banana or having a protein shake or whatever before your workout will accelerate fat loss. It just will. And so most competitors, fitness competitors, will start to incorporate fasted uh, cardio into their training program, you know, usually four, four or five weeks out from the, from the contest. I'm doing that right now, actually, as, I, as I, I'm six, seven days out from the competition right now, I'm incorporating about three to four days of fasted cardio into my program, 40 minutes to an hour long and at moderate, low to moderate intensity. You know, three, four, four, three, it's about four times per week I'm doing that. Fasted. You can do it not fasted, but you're not gonna get the same benefit. So consider that, consider doing some fasted kind of, wake up in the morning, take the dog for a walk. Don't have breakfast, have breakfast afterwards. You know, perfect. The next tip is hydrate like crazy. Now, I'm not here to tell you you need to drink more water, but, but, whenever you are restricting your, okay, let me just get one of these meal plans. So whenever you're on a meal plan like this, right? Now, this meal plan is to help me lose fat and maintain muscle, yeah? 
So that means I'm eating slightly less calories than what my body actually needs every single day. So by doing that, I'm encouraging the body to go and harvest the fat stores from my body so I can lose fat. Now, in the process of doing that, the body will feel, feel hungry at times. You won't be starving, provided you do it correctly. You know, if you, a lot of people you know, starve themselves and they, they do it wrong, they mess it up, right? And that's when you have problems showing up. But if you do it correctly, you know, if you eat slightly less calories than what your body needs, slightly less, you know, if you eat 70% of the total amount of calories you need, perfect, great place to start. And then you can tweak it from there. And, uh, and, then, and then when you get a little bit hungry, hydrate, 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 hydrate. It will make you feel full. Like, it's incredible. Like, you know what? And the sad thing about it is that we have, we've, we've been drummed into our heads so many times growing up as kids that you need to drink more water, you need to drink more water, you need to drink more water. And now I'm telling you, oh, I need to drink more Bradley's, Brad's telling me I need to drink. Yes, it's f***ing essential because, and look, you can spice it up a little bit. You don't have to drink tap water all the time because it gets boring after a while, right? You can have, um, you can flavor that water, zero calorie flavor, um, flavors that you put in the water to make it taste nice without the calories. Right, and that's a great way. What I sometimes do is I'll have sparkling mineral water, not always, sometimes. I'll have this, zero calories. I have my calcium, I have my magnesium. You know, I've got some minerals in there. And um, zero calories. And it just gives water a bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a bubble, a bit more of a bubble to it. Right, so um, that's what I do sometimes. Not always, but sometimes I do this, so. Uh, it's up to you, but flavored sparkling mineral water is perfectly fine. I highly suggest it. Highly suggest it. You know, you must, must, must. It's going to keep you fuller for longer. 100%. Most people that are dieting will overlook the hydration piece. And it's such a, like, straightforward, easy thing. Like, you think, oh, it's just water. Ah, oh, it's just hydration. It's f***ing essential. I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. I cannot emphasize it enough. If you want to... If you do not want to struggle with maintaining a calorie deficit, you need to incorporate more of this stuff. I'm not just preaching it to you, I do it myself. Next one, high volume, low calorie foods. Oh, vegetables, oh no. Brad's talking about vegetables. Everyone talks about, my mother talked about having more vegetables and eating my vegetables off my plate. Now Brad's telling me I need to eat vegetables, yes. Yes. Why? It's the same reason why you need to drink more water because high volume vegetables are usually low in calories. And so when you eat them, you're less likely going to feel hungry and you're more likely going to maintain that calorie deficit. You're more likely going to stick to your diet. Now I do it myself. Like, I'll give you a classic example. I have bags of this stuff in my freezer, frozen vegetables, carrots, Cauliflower, carrots, cauliflower, broccoli, right? These are high volume foods. If you eat them, seriously, all I need is two handfuls of this. Basically like less than a hundred calories, hundred calories, not even like, you know what I mean? It's nothing. And I feel full for like an hour or two hours. You know what I mean? So very much underrated. And you know what? You might think oh, it's boring vegetables. And spice it up a little bit. What I do, what I usually do, is I add seasoning. I add seasoning, like I have herbs and spices. This actually moves into my next one on my list here. So I'll have herbs and spices, and I'll put herbs and spices on my veggies, herbs and spices on my chicken, herbs and spices on my fish, on my beef, and I have different ones like this, you know. And I'll just sprinkle it on top. It makes it a lot more interesting than just having bland vegetables. You need to figure out ways of spicing this stuff up. Because if you don't spice up the water, you're not gonna drink it. If you don't spice up the veggies, you're not gonna eat them. Simple as that. If you're not gonna spice up the chicken, you're gonna be sick of it. If you don't spice up the fish, you gotta add spice to things you do. That's why herbs and spices um, is actually another one on my list here. Highly recommend it, herbs and spices. Um, what else is there? So, yeah, mixed vegetables, that's what I do. And oh boy, it's, you know, it, it will help you stay on track. And that's what I'm doing now. I do this all the time. 
with veggies, with spices. I don't, you know, I'm not just, as I said, I'm not just telling you you should do it. I actually am a practitioner in this. The next one on my list, write this down is basic substitutes. Now, for example, now anyone can do this. It's not hard to do. For example, if I'm cooking on the frying pan, then I won't use oil because you know, oil, like one tablespoon of olive oil, for example, is about 150 calories. You know, if you're dieting to lose weight, I can, I can assure you that's a bad move. Like it's just, and they're things you don't even think about. That's what makes it bad. It's not olive oil, olive oil's not bad for you. I'm not talking about olive oil itself, but I'm just talking about the hidden calories, like the feta cheese that you throw in your salad. You think that's completely harmless. Like if you have a few cubes of feta cheese, you have two tablespoons of olive oil, do you know what I mean? Three, four, five teaspoons of sugar in your coffee. All the shit that people don't think about that just flies under the radar and you wonder why you're not making progress. It's because of the little things. We always look for the big things in life. It's always the, the little things in life that stack up and then we go, wow, shit, we're not getting results. One, I wonder why. Then if I go through your diet, if we were here one-on-one, -on -one, I go through what you're eating, I can pick out immediately what it is you're missing. You'd be like, oh, f I didn't think of that. Oh, I didn't think of that. So you might think, oh, you know, basic substitutes. Oh, it's nothing. No, it's something when you compound it. You know, compound interest is nothing in a period of six months. But compound interest is massive when you expand it over 30 years. If you're basic math and that's how it works, the body is no different. So. Uh, I've got a few things on my list here that I personally do. There's a bunch of these things. You just have to brainstorm the substitutes that you will need to do for yourself to start moving in the right direction. So for me, I use water instead of oil to cook chicken, fish, and beef. Right, so I just put a little bit of water in the frying pan and I just swirl it around. And then when it starts to stick a little bit, because I have a non-stick frying pan, so that kind of helps, right? Uh, then I just add a little bit more water and then I just move it around a little bit more. All right, easy. Easy, 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 zero calories. Using stevia instead of sugar or any other artificial sweetener for that matter. I use stevia, not all the time, but when I feel like I need to have some sweetness in my coffee, then I'll have stevia. But when I have sugar, I have stevia. Zero calories. Stevia, zero calories. And so it's actually one of the you know nicest artificial sweeteners to have compared to you know other um, artificial sweeteners like aspartame, for example. Uh, there's a few other ones as well. So I use stevia, so consider stevia. Uh, next one on my list is accept slight feelings of hunger. <laughs> okay, now, whenever you diet, your body hates it. Your body is trying to resist anything you try and do to throw it out of metabolic homeostasis. You know, It's trying to resist those changes. If you try and limit anything, the body will get smart and try and provide a countermeasure to stop that from happening. It'll become more conservative with how it burns energy. It will set off certain hormones to make you feel hungry so you go and eat something. The truth of the matter is, if you do it correctly on a meal plan and all these little pieces, and there's obviously more than this as well, you will feel hungry at times. It's completely normal. Like, you know, for me, I'm getting ready for the stage. I go up on the stage on Sunday getting leaner, getting leaner, getting leaner. There are times where I feel a little bit hungry, but I have to accept that as completely normal. Like it's completely normal. There are times when I feel like a little bit of brain fog. I feel a little bit tired. Right now as I film this, like I'm actually pretty tired. Um, and I, I wasn't gonna shoot the video for that reason because I just can't think very quickly because I just don't have, I haven't had any carbs today. And it's like 4.15 in the afternoon. So what I do is I'll have, I'll have water, for example, or just ordinary water, it doesn't matter. And I'll just let those hunger feelings, it's not starvation, it's just a little bit of hunger every now and then, and it passes. It's like, like, like the clouds, they kind of come and they pass over and then I get distracted. And then I have moments where I'm not thinking of anything, like idle, idle moments, and then I start feeling hungry again. So it's completely normal, you have to accept that. If the diet is working, you know, you have to accept slight feelings of hunger. Slight is the key word. Not starving yourself where you wanna kill somebody for their food, because that obviously you, you must be restricting yourself too much. So the next one on my list 
Progress tracking. Now this scales, calipers, tape measures, progress photos. How do you know with what you're doing, if it's working or not, if you don't track it? You know, I, I use, I, have a, I use a DEXA scan, D-E-X-A, a DEXA scan. I pay 60, 70, 80 bucks per scan. For me, I know exactly what's going on with my body fat and how much muscle I have and everything else. You don't need to do that. It's too expensive for most people. You can just get one of these, an AccuMeasure 3000. It's a, it's a caliper, not as accurate. Um, not as accurate, it's good enough. It's good enough. And I measure myself as well. I use, I use this as well. Um, or you can get more simple and use a tape measure, right? Around the belly button. That's it. Around the belly button, you can use the bathroom scales, but don't use them on their own. Those bathroom scales can make you psycho because you become dependent on them and, and people obsess over the number on the scale. So I, I always recommend if you use bathroom scales, always use it in conjunction with other forms of measures. Always. Don't use a bathroom scale on their own. Do not. Use the bathroom scale if you have one, but provided you use it with progress photos, a tape measure, and I don't know where my tape measure is, because if, you, if you're obese and you're watching this, tape measure is more accurate than this. You know, it's when you're lean that this is more accurate, but then you get to a certain point where you're too lean, and even this becomes inaccurate. But it's good enough, it's good enough. So you can get a tape measure from a craft store, or you can get them off eBay, or eBay.com, or Amazon.com, whatever. Uh, what else do I have here? Progress photos, you can't be progress photos. You know, they're hard to take, because you might not be happy with how you look, don't worry, I've been there before. And, um, but take progress photos, take, take measurements. All right, you need to track your progress. How do you know if you're making progress if you don't track it, right? Next one on the list is offset anticipated hungry times with planned snack foods. All right, this is the second one, second last one on my list. So what I, what I was meaning to say there was that, you know, we all have moments in our day where we feel more hungry. You know, for me, for me personally, it's at night. Because I do a lot, I stay up until midnight and I'm editing videos and doing business stuff and whatever, right? So at night where it's more quiet, I feel more hungry at times. And, and there's more of that urge to eat. Now for me, what I do is I position my snacks inside my meal plan so that I deliberately snack, planned snack, I deliberately snack around those times of the night where I know, because I have self-awareness, I know when I'm going to feel most hungry. So I'm already anticipating it before it even happens. Because most people, you feel hungry and you go, oh shit, I'm hungry. I'm and then you go to the pantry, you go to the fridge, you go to the freezer, right? You look for food, you just, you just kind of scram, you're like this wild animal looking for something in desperation. You don't want to get to that point. You want to anticipate when you're likely, and only, only you know this, you have to have that self-awareness. Sit down and think to yourself, when do you feel most hungry? Not usually in the morning for most people, but it may be. Could be two, three o'clock in the afternoon. It could be around five o'clock. It could be 11 o'clock at night. For me, it's like 10, 11. So I know, okay, I need to have some carrots, some celery or whatever, an apple or two apples or three apples around that time of the night. So when 10, 11 o'clock around, when I'm on my laptop and I'm like, oh man, I'm feeling that hunger, hunger again. I was like, oh, you know what? I've got those three carrots. I've got that one apple. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going, oh shit, I've got nothing. And it's like, oh, all I've got is this. And it's pasta bake. And I was like, well, there goes my meal plan. You don't want to be in that situation. So I really, you know, I want to drive that point home. I hope that makes sense. Next one, last one, there's more of these, but I only stopped at 11. Cut out the protein bars. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love protein bars. Love them, love them. But, because I'm getting ready for the stage, Protein bars are not the best thing to have when you're trying to lose fat. The reason why I say that, I'm not saying never have them, but what I'm saying is you don't get a, a really good return on your calorie investment, so to speak. You know, like protein bars don't really keep you satiated. They might contain 20 grams of protein, 25 grams of protein, whatever, right? But they usually contain a lot more fat, a lot more carbs, which means stuff you don't want, really. And they've got all this other stuff you don't need. And so you might have, you know, two or three or four or 500 calories in a single protein bar when all you're getting out of it that you're buying it for is for the protein and you might only get 20 grams of protein. 
So if it's costing you four or 500 calories for that protein bar and you're only getting 20 grams of protein in return, that's a pretty bad trade-off. It really is, it's a bad trade-off. So protein bars are great, like if you're on a train, I do it all the time, if I'm traveling, I have protein bars, I have protein shake, my protein bars are fine. You're on a train, you're on a bus, you're on a flight, you're on a whatever, a ferry, and it's like a three hour bus ride, and you can't, you know, you can't have a big tub of protein, or you can't cook up a steak, or you can't cook up fish. So I don't care what anyone says, but I, I built most of my physique traveling around the world. This is what you do, right? You do that, not the best thing to do, but if you're traveling, that's what you do. However, I'm not traveling right now, so that's not what I'm doing, all right? I've cut the protein bars out. Bad return on your calories, if you know what I mean. So I want that protein bar, it's gonna cost me four, 500 calories, it's only gonna give me 20, 24 grams of protein. Wow, I'm gonna have a protein shake, or I can have 100 grams of chicken and get 20 grams of protein. It costs me 150 calories, if that. See the difference? That's all I have on my list. I hope that was helpful. These are 11 tips that I have. I can go on forever. And if the ladies out there watching this, these tips also apply for you as well. But I'm a guy and I'm getting ready for a fitness comp. So that's, I've deliberately targeted this video to the guys out there that want to, um, that want to lose some weight or cut. Cutting, losing weight, or losing fat, whatever you want to call it, right? So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, you can always email me and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Everybody, you're awesome and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.